The Bay of Naples was the backdrop to stage eight of the Giro d'Italia. A wonderful, interesting design of a course, taking place a day after a seventh stage that ended up with the first ever Grand Tour win for Kuhn Ballmann. He also took the leader's jersey in the King of the Mountains competition. But to Naples, 153 kilometers, the first visit from the Giro in nine long years. Only three cities have ever been visited more, and they knew it was all going to be a very fast start. Riders on the turbo trainers, with Mathieu van der Poel, one of the big favorites of the day. A mini world championships, if you like, a world championships without the distance. One long lap around outskirts of Naples before four shorter laps, taking in Bacoli and Monte di Procida before returning to the center of Napoli for an expected finish between the favorites who could either get it out in a breakaway or to see if the sprinters could hold on. It was standing start as well. Mechanical problems meant that by the time we got to kilometer zero under the finish arch, everybody had to stop. The flag was waved, but the action came thick and fast. Mathieu van der Poel, one of the first attackers. Thomas Akent was trying to follow him. And soon a group of 21 riders would be up the road. It would take them 15 to 20 kilometers to consolidate that advantage. Quite a few teams had several riders in the break. Lotto Sudal with three members. But one of the components of the breakaway would be Guillaume Martin. At four minutes and six seconds from the GC lead of Juan Pedro Lopez, it meant that his team Trek Segafredo would have to control things. At the front, the intermediate sprint bought 12 points in the Malia Ciclamino competition for Biniam Gilmay. Gilmay, one of the pre stage favourites, along with Mathieu van der Poel. And it would be van der Poel who launched things with 46 Ks to go. On the final lap of the circuit, attacking on one of the climbs and taking away a small group. Most of the original breakaway would come back. A few finding they didn't have any legs. And then another move went. Davide Gaburro off the front, Jorge Arcas chasing, and then two riders from Lotto Sudal, along with one from Dronoper and Droni Giocattoli. That one would be Simone Ravanelli. He'd be the first to be distanced when Thomas Akent and Haram Verhuka went to the front. Mauro Schmidt behind will launch another group. Walt Pools, Biniam Germay, Guillaume Martin and Mathieu van der Poel would be in the chase, but they were over half a minute down with 26 kilometers remaining. That gap seesawed. It went up and down, yo-yoing along, with the front quartet still managing to keep a gap inside the last 10 Ks. With seven and a half k's to go, there was action from the peloton too. Leonard Kemner, 38 seconds behind in second place, hoping to take the pink jersey, but the pink jersey was having none of it. Juan P. Lopez defending and sticking like glue to his wheel. The gap was 20 seconds with six and a half k's to go, and Fano Paul and Gilmaya went away on the final descent, taking the gap down to 10 seconds in the final two kilometers. It will prove to be too little too late for them, however. Behind, they tightened up their shoes. They began to get ready for a four-up sprint. It came to the final 250 metres. And with 200 to go, De Ghent launching after the hooker controlled for the final three or four Ks. Gaburro behind him, but unable to get anywhere near. Jorge Arcas finished third. For hooker fourth, cheering as Thomas De Ghent made it Thomas d'Italia bookending a decade of brilliant breakaway wins. His first big win here at the Giro d'Italia in 2012 on the mighty Stelvio, down by the seaside in Naples. A decade later, De Ghent was once again a winner at the Giro. In between that moment, there had been stage wins at the Vuelta and the Tour. Win number 17 in the career of Thomas De Ghent, a very special one indeed, coming three years after his last Grand Tour stage win at the Tour de France. De Ghent, Gaburro, Arcas, Von Hooker, with Girmay winning the sprint for fifth, his fourth top five so far in the race. Guillaume Martin finishing at 33 seconds, and that was important with the peloton coming over at three minutes 33. Three minutes back for the Frenchman in the GC. Juanpe Lopez held on to the pink jersey then. 
But Martin into the top 10 in fourth place at 106. He's in a great position in front of the rest of the GC favourites, led by Yates in fifth as they go to Blockhouse. A 38-second lead then for Juanpe Lopez to defend over Kemner, but he might be looking further back. The first 17 kilometres of the stage, ridiculously difficult. Then you add in Paso Lanciano. Add a climb to Blockhouse from the most difficult side. The first visit since Naido Quintana won a few years ago. Possibly the hardest mountain top finish of the whole Giro d'Italia. It's 191 kilometres for stage nine. Should be a blockbuster, the end of the first week proper and the first big appointment in the mountains with big moves expected in the general classification. The Giro d'Italia is live each and every day on GCN Plus, Discovery Plus and Eurosport.